This is the Red All Over Show with me, Joe Beards, all sponsored by footyprint.com. Josh Atherton, Alan Smith, and Gary Tedford is here as well. That's that's right, isn't it, Gary? I probably said it wrong. I talked actually about right. two seconds ago. That's right. Good. No, it's, it's right, yeah. Uh, it's right. We brought Gary in because, uh, one, Andy's at his brother's, so he's got no internet connection, but two, obviously Gary being a Barnsley fan, but also a Scottish fan. And England and Scotland, you might have fallen asleep, have drawn nil-nil. Uh, so we're going to talk about that in a bit, but it weren't best game, so we're not going to start with that. We're going to start with... Uh, the speculation around Valerian Ismail possibly moving on and going to West Brom, so leaving Barnsley. Um, where we're at at the minute, at time of recording, there's been a lot of journals uh, saying that West Brom have approached Barnsley for talks. Um, Dougal came from Chronicle, seemed, seemed to say at the minute that there's been no official approach, but it seems like things there probably are going to be talks taking place. Uh, it's a um, two million reported buyout clause as well. So if they want him, they're going to have to pay Barnsley around two million quid. Uh, but if they do meet that, I think that there's a, then it's down to, to, to Val on whether he wants to go and, and move from Barnsley to, to West Brom. So a massive story. Uh, a story we all wanted to avoid, Josh. And we we're all hoping we were going to avoid yeah, this summer. Oh, <laughs> mate. Is, we have one good season and they all come in. He's not that good, West Brom. You don't want him. You don't want him. <laughs> no, I think he's an ambitious guy in here as well. So I think, for me, if if they approach, it'd be silly not to go. I mean, he's more or less guaranteed. He, I mean, under his coaching with that, with a, the, the quality of players which they've got, he's more or less guaranteed to take him back up and then to get his opportunity to coach in the Premier League. So I think it'd be silly not, not to take it. I mean, obviously, I'll be disappointed if he leaves because I think I think he can take us to the next step. I think we can replicate what's happened this season. If the board back him in the transfer window and move forward, but it's just more of a dead set of, of him pushing for the top, for in uh, the top of the championship next season if he goes. So... The team's always going to come looking at him. We're having it with Palace earlier on uh, during June, and now it's come to West Brom. And if he goes, he goes. But I'll be I'll, I'll definitely sad to see him go. What do you reckon, Gary? You tend to be the man in the know. I know that you're. Uh, <laughs> you, you you always seem to know a bit more than everybody else around Barnsley. I'm not sure how you do that when you're up in Scotland, but you seem to you seem to do it, pal. So is he off or what? To be honest with you. I said at the end of last season, well, the end of the season, he's put himself in the shop window, so there was always going to be people looking at him. It was, it was nailed on. If you thought that no clubs were going to come in from whether it be here or abroad, you must have been stupid because it was him that turned the season around for us. I think he'll go me, personally. Right, you've heard it there, Reds. Gary says he's off, so we're, we're scooping, aren't we? No, 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 no <laughs> Joe. Gary never said he's off. Gary said he thinks he's away. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Well, let, let's put it this way. They're going to pay the two million compo, right? And you know, to see my social media and stuff, I'm not like a, a bold lover. But on this occasion, they can't do anything if, if they put the two million pound in and that they get they, they're going to pay it, then the guy's going to double his wages. And it's basically been devalued because both clubs have basically said two million. They have paid the two million. Are they going to pay the two million to speak to him? Then. It's up to Val, it? And let's be honest, it's a big club for them. Like for him to go there, it's a step chance to go to the Prem. They've got more money, they've got better players. They've got two, I get it, I get it. It's a step up. If it was if he was leaving to go to like a, a Middlesbrough, then it's, for me, that's a step aside. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But he's, if, he's, if he's leaving to go there, then... And again, as I said before, as you know, I'm no... Like, I've got my things in my head about the board and stuff, so... Every manager they've brought in for Stendhal's always been an improvement. So fair play, let's see what happens here. But if you're asking me honestly, he's gone. Well, I don't know what's depressed me more. Well, I do. That's depressed me more than, <laughs> than that England game. But England game nearly sent me to sleep. Al, like Gary says, it's hard to, to know what to do in this situation because two million quid as a buyout clause for a manager, that's pretty decent. Really, for managers, you don't see much more. I don't think you see well, you might do at top level, but at our level, two million quid's a decent chunk of money for a manager. Obviously, we didn't know when Val came in, we we, ex, we were hoping and expecting good things, but we didn't expect him to do as well as he's done. Um, it's a shame though, because in my head, I'm thinking I wish it were five or six million now because he's worth a lot more than two mil. It's a sad, sad loss if he does go to uh, baggies, isn't it? And they've got all the parachute payment money, 
So they've got money to spend. Uh, and for their sustainability, they want to get straight back into the premiership, don't they? And with Val on board, uh, hope he don't, if he does get the job, he don't come pinching in players. Uh, as I said, there's Moet there, isn't there? Uh, he could take Moet uh, to West Brom to, to Baggies uh, and look to get into the premiership. Uh, I feel for our fans because most of our fans have not welcomed him to walk or seen him at all, have they? Um, and, 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 and that's sad to see what he's done this season, uh, last season, coming in in October. Uh, it's been immense. Um, I don't know. Fingers crossed that uh, they go for somebody else and we've still got Valerian uh, come uh, September August. But who knows? It's hard one, Josh, because uh, anybody who watches this show knows we're a glass half full most of the time, aren't we? Uh, or at least Ethan is are. Um, but I'm, I'm struggling on this one. I, I think, obviously, it's good, isn't it, that we know that board have, have brought in decent managers like Gary said it's not been like this is a one-off gem that you know Val's the one the one out of ten that we've brought in that we have had some decent managers over the last few apart from Jose Marais maybe is the, the last one where the mistakes might have been made um, but yeah still a massive loss if he does decide to leave yeah I mean his last three have come in and done what's been asked of him Stendhal brought us up Struber kept us up and Val's pushed on to the next level um, but it will be it will be a massive loss. But if you look at that track that track record at last three we've brought in, it might not be as bad as what we think. We might have someone lined up again who's just going to come in. And especially with these release clauses which we get, which we put in these contracts, it we kind of let managers use us a bit as a stepping stone to then move on. And I think that's why we get these. That's why we've uncovered and be able to attract someone like Val who's coming and brought us that next level. And the opportunity to then come and put put yourself in the shop shop window, as Gary said, it's some managers will love that, and then it allows them to progress their career. So, if he does go, I back us to bring someone in who's gonna who's gonna follow on from what Paul's done because we've got a, we've got a blueprint there of how we've tried to play with a high press and and the attacking fo- football. So it's gonna be more of the same. It's just me a different person in charge. Is it a no brainer, lads? Is it? If you're Valerian now, are you sat there thinking, yeah, I'm probably off? Or are you sat there thinking, oh, I've had a, you know, one a season I've had with Barnsley, maybe I could take him to the next level and do something special? Well, my heart is telling me that I hope they just, like, I'll take Barnsley at next level, right? But let's be honest, we're all Barnsley fans, diehards, right? We got to fifth last season with him. He must be sitting there thinking in his head, going, well, can I really achieve any more? Or am I going to... Do you know what I mean? And let's be honest. Let's just say for talking sake, right, he's on 10k a week. What are they going to throw at him on a three-year deal? 20, 30? Yeah. I don't, listen, again, I don't blame anybody at the club. I would like to know, though, what I would like to know is, is, is the club putting the £2 million compensation into these new ma- like the managers? Is it the agents? Or, do you know what I mean? It all depends. Because we never used to do stuff like this, did we? I think it's wisdom, to be fair. Like, I know that you said you don't want to credit the ball too much, Gary, but I think there's been a, there has been improvements made in that area and with players as well in terms of contracts and making sure that if an asset is going to, if you want to call it that, someone's going to leave, that we're going to get some sort of compensation for it and a decent amount as well. So. I've all my, like, all my gripes with the board are off field, as you know, so I'm not going to get that. Like, on field has been fantastic. It really has. It. And I hope we push on but then how many times like the last three have been like gems and improved but that the next one is it going to be a gem it's, it's a hard one do you know what I mean I don't blame anybody at the club because there's nothing if he wants to go he's going simple the thing is though like he's gonna if he goes to West Brom and it, 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 you know we're talking as if he's gone he's, he's not gone yet we don't know he might decide to stay and you know he's, he's definitely connected with the club and he feels that connection with Barnsley so there's always a chance that He'll sit down, think about it, and think, actually, you know what? I could achieve something really special. I did this season. I could achieve some. I could go next step. And you know, there's there is a heart in it. It's not always a money decision. Um, he's going to be under pressure though if he goes to West Brom. He's got he's got to get him promoted, hasn't he? That's the ask. First time. It's it's straight back up. That's what they'll expect. That yes, I, I think that's the case. But then again, it's. It all depends what he wants to do in football, and if he wants to go do well with them and maybe get a prem job or whatever, you know, it, it all depends. 
signings and what the guy wants. But I, I just can't see it. It's too big a thumb down for the lad, do you know what I mean? He, unfortunately, that's what I think. I'm, I'm going to be the glass half empty, right? But you can be half full. But I honestly think... Nice, it looks, I, I that looks I mean, three quarters empty. <laughs> ah, well, I'm going to fill it up. Um, I, don't, I don't want the guy to leave. I think he's been great. And as again, with my... I can't fault the board and everything on field. Going back to what Alan said there about Mowat, I think he's already gone anyway. I think he was gone six months ago. Because the contract that they've offered them, rumoured to offer, have offered them, is the best that they possibly can. And if they've done that six months ago and he's no signed it, he's no signing now. Yeah, it's it's a it's a difficult one, isn't it? Uh with, with Mo, I think. We've always been a bit split on what's going to happen with that. Uh, is he was he waiting to see what happened at end of season, see if we got promoted, or was he just waiting until end of season because he knew he'd have offers and then he can just well, assess his options? Which you know you won't blame him for doing that because I think we'd all use the wisdom to think let's wait till end of contract, see see what's on the table, and then decide when. The thing about that, Joey, if Valerian does go, if you look at Valerian and Alex after each game, they're like father and son that they're, they're interconnected, aren't they? Don't fix it all there. And I could see more going to West Brom if he goes to West Brom. I mean, I think it's a bit early to make the assumption now that you know Valerian still he's still a he's still bans his coach at the time of recording this to to just assume that. But I understand where you're coming from because there is that connection, and maybe Alex has got some offers on the table, and maybe he gets a new one from West Brom when Valerian if if Valerian was to become manager. And yeah, I can see where where you're making the connection, but not necessarily. Um, I think the worry is that as our leader, Valerian's been very much the, the leader, obviously, all season. Galvanised the team, loved what he's done. He's the one you won't want to lose out of every single person at the club. You know, we talked he's about got, Dave Murphy he's potentially. He's got that unity, has yeah. He's got that unity within the camp. And Valerian's made that, hasn't he? I know it was there on still, but he has made it. And it's stronger. I think that's going to be really hard to replace. He's just such his attitude, the way he is. The you know, I was saying tonight, watching England game, and I'm thinking this game's so dull. I said, I said to me, I said to my uh, my dad, was I said, it? I thought it was a great game. Well, for, it weren't bad for that Scotland, Gary. Gary. It weren't bad for y'all, but for us, it was terrible. But I might follow Scotland in the next round. I think, I think I want Scotland to go further than England after that. But honestly, I, I sat there and I said to my dad, I says, if Valerian were managing this. He'd have, he'd have made three subs at half time. He wouldn't have been having any of that. None of that nonsense. Well, I mean, Carlton Morris should have been coming on, and well, I mean, you know, he'd have had he'd have had DK on and whoever else. Go, going back to what you said about power there, right? The thing for me, and I, this is not in the no stuff or anything. This is just my personal opinion. Six months ago, when it was rumored and stuff, where we know who the contracts were offered, and it went back and forth. If he comes out and says he's no signing a contract, then who's not to say the gaffer and they put him with the under-23s or the under-21s? So he's obviously going to say he's got time to think about it. Do you know what I mean? I get that. The boy's looking after his own career. I've said for six months ago, I don't think he'll sign. And I still don't think he'll sign. I hope he does, but I just don't think he will. Yeah. I I, I won't blame... We've, we've talked about it before, Gary, on this show, but I won't blame Alex for that because he's at the age where he probably, you know, probably thinking... He needs, well, if he's getting... If, he's, if he goes to another club and gets... 12, 15, 16, whatever, 18 grand a week on a two, three year deal. It's let's be honest, it's going to be his last big con contract before he get what is he 26, 27? Yeah. 26. So if he gets a three year deal, it's football's changed now, isn't it? No club's gonna pay you 20 grand a week at 29 year old. Unless you're Sheffield Wednesday, obviously, but that's a different kettle of fish. <laughs> um I, I, Thanks, I, Gary, I that's a few dislikes. Cheers. I, I, I get it, I get it from um both sides of the fence. The club have done everything rumoured again, the contract that they've offered them. That's the best the club can give. So you can't fault them. If you don't sign it, you don't sign it. You know what I mean? There's nothing yeah. the club can do about it. Yeah. I know that there'll be some fans, uh, the glass, a quarter, quarter, uh, sorry, three quarters empty like Gary's that <laughs> we're saying, oh, it's I'm a more, they should have done more, we could have offered him more, but we don't see all the ins and outs, do we, Reds? That's the problem. We don't know how much they could have done or not done because we don't see... Who's oh, that, oh, that, oh, that pick loppers, Joe? Who's yeah, <laughs> that pick loppers? Anyway, we've been positive tonight, Reds. Give us a like just to cheer us up because I tell you what, we're not... <laughs> we're on it best mood. I know we tend to be quite positive. 
But we're going to cheer you all up now because we're going to, in a couple of minutes, we're going to start talking about England, which was, you know, such a great result against Scotland tonight. And Gary's really happy about it. So we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. Last thing on Valerian, just sum it up for us, lads. Josh, how much of a loss is this to Barnsley if he decides to go to West Brom? I think it's the biggest loss that we could possibly have over this summer window. Um any player could go. I think he's got the capability to mould anyone into a style of play. Uh, you look at you, you, you look at Mowit now. He's like a triathlete when he's playing. I've, he, he somehow got an extra yard of pace. He can he can run for a full night here. When he first came, he didn't he didn't look like that kind of player. He didn't look like he'd be able to carry the team the way he does now. And I think he is the best coach that we've had out of the last. Uh, we just said that Stendhal and Struber were. Um, more brilliant when they come to us, but I think he's the one that's got the best the best capabilities and capacity to mould players into a style of play. And it'll be a massive loss because I think he can take us to that next level if he gets backed. Oh, Josh, I told you. What you were supposed to say is that it was terrible. So when I put this video on social media and tag West Brom in it, they all think, now nah, well, nah, we'll, we'll have a rethink about that. What you done, mate? Now nah, they're going to oh, definitely want him. He's, a long, he's, like, he's like a big Sam. He's a... Long ball merchant into channels, up to big man and plays for knockdowns. Terrible, wouldn't suit West Brom. We should have got Wayne Rooney on. He would have been able to clarify. <laughs> Al, seriously though, mate, oh, I'm absolutely devastated if Val does decide to go. He's been brilliant. I love him. I think he gets he gets Barnsley, he gets what we're about. And yeah, it's just going to be a massive loss. If you'd have asked me who, who the one person I would have wanted to stay at the club this summer, it would be Valerian. We talked about Moat, we've talked about DK, obviously going back to Orlando, all the other players, you know, Britain, uh, Morris, everybody who's been talked about possibly leaving. But out of all of them, Valerian is the one that I want to stay. He's a tactical wizard, isn't he? And that's what we're going to miss. Uh, good man manager, uh, gets all lads together. Uh, they've all grown in stature in skill. Uh, the team spirit is far beyond anything we've had for a few seasons. He expects a lot of young lads through and they're all eager to work hard and work for, for the club, for the shirt and give their all. And that's all down to Valerian Ismail uh, in the short term. And I say, what, October? We haven't had him a full season, have we? And that's the sad thing. If he does go. Go away, West Brom. We don't want to hear from you. Get lost. <laughs> Gary, um, impossible to replace, like like for like? Well, obviously there's no man bigger than the club. And, but again, going back to what Josh says, I would, if you, let's just say for me, he's the most, that the person that we don't want to lose. Any player, we, I think we could bring another player in and he would mould them in and stuff. But him, I don't know. It, it, if I want to go to the other side, it it could be like a one hit season. I, I don't think it is. I think he's, he's got what he's got. The players would run through the wall for him. Do you know what I mean? I just think they same players have done. They've just stepped up. They've went from like fifty percent to hundred percent, and they've run the whole game. Whereas I'm not saying that they didn't try for the last manager. I'm not saying that, but he seems to get that extra ten percent when everybody's struggling. He gets them out and he's on the line and this different subs. Yeah, I, I don't want him to go, but... One of the only managers that I think I've ever seen that he, he's not afraid to just make an early sub. I mean, I've not seen... I didn't see hardly any managers making three subs at half-time or three subs on 50 minutes. Like, I've not, it's just not something that's known in the game. But it worked for him so many times. Just such a brilliant coach, and I'm going to be absolutely gutted if he decides to go. Um, last five minutes, cheer us up then. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Give us a smile. Hey, there we go. There we go. Scottish Red. Hey, there we go, mate. Me. Go on then. You can have your. You can have your five minutes, mate. In Scotland. Where does Ock Park at times, Gaz? I thought it well. I would expect it to be honest with you. Right? I've been winding it up on social media all week and stuff, as, as you know, but. I want a bit. Oh, I don't know. I just don't think England turned up. I just thought, I think that the way they played, I thought they just had to go on the pitch in Scotland. Why do Scotland? I'm never going to do that. Do you know what I mean? If Scotland had a, a better striker, I don't know, it could have been, I mean, all right, 
the Barnsley Beckenbauer, he hit the post. I mean, that was a great header. But other than that, I don't... Mount had won in the first half. I don't really remember much more after that. And at, and at points, England had the back, their back to their own goal because Scotland kept pressing. You thought Scotland were unlucky. Six minutes, yeah. Gary. It was five, six minutes that Marshall had his first save. That's how poor we were. And Kane, in two games, only had six touches in opposition box. That's how poor it is. I mean, we've got to not drop Kane for me next game. He's, he, he can't start with Harry Kane. I know it's captain. But for me, your players wanted it more. Uh, so and they were always going to want it more. And it was outstanding. But then turn that around, Alan. Well, England poor because Scotland didn't let them play? Or do you just think England were poor? Because I thought Scotland game plan was brilliant. They just kept England out. A good game plan, Gary, but we played with no tempo. It was so lethargic. It was crab football. Square, square, pass, back, square. There were nobody in our side who were creative enough and no runners. Yeah, is, that because, is that because Scotland maybe played the game plan better? And, probably. And probably, probably Gary, yeah, I accept that. But it's up to that international level to have a brain and to work it out and break your side down. And with nobody in that squad to do it. England, England, for me, looked at that game. And what they should have done is they looked at that game and thought, I've got three points on board against Croatia. That's our, probably, you could argue, hardest game out at way. Or, you know, in terms of quality of teams. I know this one were always going to be a toughie. But they could have just gone for it, made it a really exciting game. Yeah, Scotland probably would have scored and maybe got a couple of goals. But you, you probably back England with the players they've got if you, it was an open game to beat Scotland something like 4-3 or something like that, or 4-2. They didn't. They just thought, you know what, we're happy to play for a draw and if we get a chance, we'll score it and that'll be it. It'll be 1-0. And I just think that is just dreadful. That is absolutely dreadful. What a bad display. I don't know. Some of the pundits were saying, oh, it was such an exciting game. I'm sorry. I didn't know what we're excited about that match. There were a few chances, yeah. But generally, it was just so slow-paced. It was like an advert for walking football, Josh, in my opinion. I thought it was a really game plan will bang on. I thought that they did really well. Switch, switching from a three to a five at back at times, it just stopped us massively. Sterling while well, going into half spaces between full back and centre and cent, and centre half, and just getting marshaled out of the way. The, Steve Clark has pulled an absolute number on Southgate for me, and that's not the kind of game where you want Rice and Phillips playing together. They they've gone back to both being too too defensive after the Croatia game where Phillips were further up the field and it's, it it didn't it didn't work again. It needed change at half time to have to, to have Grealish come on ball, turn and drive at him because then you're going to start dragging that shape of Scot of Scotland around a bit more. You're going to create some space and we never did. We just made it we made it a bit a, a bit too easy for Scot for Scotland, but they definitely didn't give us anything at all. I, I thought it were a very solid defensive performance for them to be honest. Yep, I, I agree. Anyway, we've got to finish up because we're about to, about to get kicked off uh, Zoom. So, uh, Skizzle like Reds, Skizzle like Reds. And we will, sorry, I haven't got time. Uh, and well done to Scotland. Fair play to them. And England, book your ideas up. We're getting a bit bored. I fell asleep. Come on then, lads. Uh, let's up, Blair. Well done, Gary. And Scotland. Yeah, lads. Thank you.